Dear students, now I'll be giving you an overview of the biological databases and online tools that you can use during your bioinformatics work. So to begin with, as you know, there are three generally uh, considered sources of biological information that we use in bioinformatics. The first one is the DNA sequence. The second one is the RNA sequence. And the third one are the protein sequences. Besides the sequence information, you also have these molecules taking 3D shapes. So therefore, we need to look at these structures and the information pertaining to these structural conformations. Moreover, there is a third type of information that may arise as a result of these molecules talking to each other or interacting with each other. So in totality, you have three sources of information. The first one is the sequences. The second one is the structure. And the third one is the interaction. So we'd want to store this information and retrieve it. The first thing that we need to consider is how will we get this information? So for the sequence information, we can sequence the genomes, the RNAs, and the proteins. So the genome can be sequenced using, for instance, next generation sequencing or whole genome sequencing, while the proteins can be sequenced using mass spectrometry or even admin degradation. So you don't need to consider the details of these for the moment, but just to let you know how these sequences can be obtained for each one of them, I'm mentioning these strategies. Besides the sequence information, you also need the structural information. So how do we get the structural information from these molecules? Towards obtaining the structural conformations, we have three different uh, experimental strategies. That is the atomic force microscopy, the X-ray crystallography, or the NMR spectroscopy. So you can use these techniques to evaluate the structure of these biological molecules and then put them in your computer. So, as I just mentioned, that this information is extremely useful. The sequence, the structure, and the interaction information can help researchers to build newer understandings of the biological systems that they are studying. But before we get into this, we need to appreciate one more important thing. That there is lots of this information that is available with us now. And secondly, this information is increasing at a very rapid pace. So besides representing this information in your computer, you also want to have scalable and fast computer algorithms to retrieve and process this information. So how do we obtain this information? How do we store this information? How do we share this information? And how do we analyze this information are all the topics of online databases and tools. It is important to understand the role of these within a bioinformatician's research life and how these can contribute to the research. So the objective then is to create databases of sequence information, of structure information, and of interaction information, and then make them available with our uh, redundantly available internet. So anything you obtain from your experiment can be very easily and conveniently shared with the rest of the world by simply putting that information on a website or a web portal. So in conclusion, the need for biological databases arises from the fact that a lot of these uh, data sets are being generated and that we need to organize and store this information for sharing it with others and analyzing it using computational algorithms. More so, many of such databases exist and that they are available online 
and most of them are free of cost.